Simon, I can't hear you. Dad, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, apparently it was uh, on the wrong section. Cool. Good afternoon. Section, right? Section, right? Section, yeah. It was a 30 minute section and was just, again, like the uh, contract and going. Paragraph one, G1, G2, right? It was really just a conversation that all of us are going to be having with our clients, right? And the importance in how to navigate those conversations because guess what? August 13 is around the corner. Okay. That's uh that's next week. So regardless of what we're saying now, it's gonna be upon us uh sooner than later. So you know, I appreciate you all. We had a great uh, uh, participation on Zoom. So we have a little over 81 people. So obviously everyone is having conversations around all this. So the importance of navigating. And we're going to continuously have these every month uh, for the rest of the year. Obviously, contract classes is also important as well to understand the ins and outs and how to navigate those as well. So again, I thank you and I appreciate you for being here. We're going to go ahead and get started with our team meeting. Are you guys excited? Yeah. You don't sound excited. Can you believe it's already August 7th? Wow. You know, July just went so quick. Super, super quick. So guess what? Month of August is going to go quick as well. The good thing is, you know, uh, Fernando's going to be here talking to you as well little while uh, to talk to you about the rates too. We have some exciting news regarding rates as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So our mission is to provide agents with a place where they will be empowered, trained, motivated to experience growth, wealth, and a legacy that allows them to live their best life possible. Our belief, when the values of your own company align with your own beliefs, you know you found your professional home. Our vision to achieve amazing professionals and personal development so that KW South Bay remains the agency of choice. Here's up a round of applause. All right, next slide, please. All right, we want to bring our awesome affiliate, uh, Sean Perfect from American. Well, good afternoon, Mish. Um, thank you for having me, Simon. I um, want to talk about um, a certain flyer I brought for you guys. I did not place it on the table because there's already too much stuff on the table, <laughs> and I don't want to litter it, so I'm going to put it over there for you guys. But basically what it is, it just points out the numbers of how many people actually use the home warranty after closing. It's a whopping 46% of people use the warranty uh, within 60 days after the close of escrow. For those of you that do tell them, so it's really important that we do remind our homeowners that they have a home warranty. To do that, First American actually sends an email out to the agent 30 days after the close of escrow if you order a home warranty with First American. Because you're plugging in the closing date when you order a home warranty, we're able to document and record when it's closing. Then we notify you 30 days after to remind you, hey, did you guys let your homeowners know that they have a home warranty? So it's gonna provide two things. First of all, it's gonna give your homeowners the coverage that they need, that they're probably forgetting about, and it's gonna give you guys a reason to touch your clients. Um, we always need a reason to touch your clients. Um, so um, that is here, you guys. Um, also wanna remind you guys of our marketing center. We have free charge marketing material for you guys. Let me know if you guys need to use it. I'm happy to walk you through that. It's super simple. You guys get tons of free stuff, um, and you guys can put your cell phone number, your DRE, all of your information. And that's about it for home warranty. Awesome. So, segue into so yeah, home. let's go ahead and go with the segue of introducing this fun young man coming out of your hair. Yes. I call you for the home warranty, and yes. I said, you say your, your message said you call directly to your service yeah. center. Huh? So we don't go through you because everybody else is going to call me first. Well, I call me first. If I don't answer and you need it right away, obviously call in because I don't want you not to get the warranty. Or you can leave a message if you have a little bit of time. So always call me. My cell phone number is on all of my information. Right. So okay. I would want you to call me. 
John is very responsive to you, no, and she, she'll pick up and answer any and all of your questions as well. Yes, sir. The uh, First American offer a warranty for sellers while we're like on the market? Yes. We do have a seller's policy. It starts for about a dollar a day. You can get it as soon as you um, get your listing. Um, I tell a lot of agents, just depending on the seller and if you're trying to impress them, it's something that you can pay for. Or if it's something that you just want to offer, say if you list with me, Farrah, here at Keller Williams South Bay, we have a special seller's coverage that we can offer you. You can make it sound exclusive as you want because nobody really talks about it, seller's coverage. It's our most underutilized piece of coverage. So because of that, you can make it as exclusive as you want, just with Fair or just with Keller Williams Health. So there are some, you know, if you guys have questions, call me. We can talk about it. I've talked about it a thousand times, so I know how to spin it different ways. Yes, Gary. Pay for that one time for closing or only to utilize? Well, both. So, you know, if it is utilized, absolutely, we're going to have to pay for it. If by any chance the listing cancels, then we can waive it completely. Mm -hmm. And you can pay for it at the close of escrow. So, yes. Okay, awesome. so. so does everyone have a box or at least have a box in front of us? I know some of you outside of your training. So, okay. So, Don, you want to introduce our guest? So, this is our guest, Dean Iconis. Um, He moved me during my move. So, I think I remember I shared with you guys that I moved um, in January. He did. He, he's moved me twice, actually. Not only is he my stepdad, but he also does. Um, he does. No, the sound. Stepdaughter, I got her. Anyway, so I brought him because he wanted to talk about moving. I wanted to share how my moving experience was, and that scene. And I think awesome. he has a slide as well. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go uh, get Dean a round of applause. Right, well, Natalie, if you can uh, give us that uh, slide or video, please. Oh. I've never seen anything quite like it. Living in this house is like having your own paradise. It's fully fenced and gated, and everywhere you look, you just see greenery. It's truly a sanctuary. This is really a trophy property that would be very difficult to replicate anywhere in the world. Welcome to Pasadena, California, and the largest private estate in town. The estate, Knoll House, consists of two structures. One, the original house designed by Myron Hunt, which is approximately 12,000 square feet. Absolutely beautiful original details. And the other, this entertainment gallery with more than 20,000 square feet that's on a level of its own. It's not the kind of thing you'd even be permitted to do nowadays. Sitting on two and a half acres, Knoll House just emerged from a meticulous seven-year restoration project to bring the 1917 home back to its original glory. He meticulously took apart the property and re-established. There she goes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's just a small example of uh, what my company does, but we're so multifaceted. Uh, we do a lot of high-end homes like this throughout the country. We have seven offices nationwide, a fleet of 150 trucks. I have 250 employees. Uh, contractors I do have were employees at one time, and we didn't want to lose them because they wanted to become businessmen. So I have I've made them businessmen in my own company. Uh, I did that because I once drove from Mayflower like my dad, and then in 1980. We started thinking about starting our own company, and then in 1982 was when we started. I knew I was going to be a truck driver and a mover at five years old. It was 1961, in Corona, Queens, New York, and my dad put me in the truck for the first time. And I watched him walk in front, and when he got in, there was a big white light around him. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to be a truck driver. My dad had three sons. I don't know how he did it, but he got us all into the business. We all became movers. And uh, I raised my four sons the same way. He bagged a thousand Hall of Fame numbers. We got all three of his sons in the business. I had four sons. I got two of them in the business. 500, back 500. Still Hall of Fame numbers. <laughs> uh, in these boxes, we, we, we bought you some gifts. I have my business card with history about the company and my son's business card. We have three generations. Our employees are 10 years plus. I trained probably 70% of them, personally. 
I drove 35 years cross country, got 5 million miles under my belt, and I take a lot of pride in what we do. Uh, there's a lot of moving companies, good ones and not so good ones. But my cell phone number is on that card. There is nobody else to call but me. If you, if, I'm just like Sean. If, uh, you can't, if I don't pick up right away, I'm on the phone with another client or taking care of my mom, who's 93. So just text me and I'll get back to you right away. I travel back to New York and here quite frequently because my mom's not doing so much. We lost my dad 18 years ago and we just carried on his tradition of the golden rule. So that, that was basically our story. If you want to be your mover, uh, I'd love to have signed and maybe give me your email list so I can keep track of any recommendations. And well, we can definitely put you yeah. as part of our affiliation. Yes. You know, yes, yes. similar to uh, your uh, stepdaughter, you know, as an affiliate of the office, you know, because we definitely have a roster of over 100 agents in this office. So local moving, long distance moving from anywhere. And we also specialize in small shipping. So you have clients with multiple houses, some in Idaho, Scottsdale, Santa Barbara, Palm Springs. We have daily runs to all these little cities. You can take a couch if they want it to you from here to Whitefish, Montana, from here to Richmond, above Fort Wayne. We do about 50,000 of those shipments every year. We also have an enclosed car transport division. Uh, we probably do about 20,000 cars a year. We probably do about 1,500 in these high-end moves right here. So the quality of the men you'll have on a job, whether it's just a local move from Torrance to Torrance or TV, these guys will come in and have to take off their shoes. They will put on white gloves. They will. Uh, we can hang art, hang chandeliers, whatever we've done. We do it. And they pack too. Right? Oh, pack and crate. We ship all over the world for strategies and Christmas. And we do all the stuff that we when they have an auction, we ship all their artwork, line collection. We got climate control units. Whatever you need done, we can get it done. So thank you very much, Simon. God bless you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Dean. Before you uh leave my little stage here, uh I, I actually have a commercial class A license. Yeah. I have zero restrictions on my license, so I can do doubles, triples, Me too. combinations, hazmat, tank endorsement, air brakes, and all that. I took my road test in 1974. I was 18 years old on my 18th birthday. When the instructor got in the truck, back then the truck had two stick shifts. Like yeah. Not just one, I had two sticks. Oh I took the truck about a quarter of a mile, the guy told me to stop. He looked at me and he goes, how long have you been driving? I said, you want to you know, lie or tell the truth? <laughs> he goes, tell me the truth. Well, I sat on my dad's lap at about five and I drive it ever since. So, yeah. Well, you know, we get back up and now we're good. Yeah, just to kind of share that story and thank you, because I, I have a heart for truck drivers. Yeah. And the reason is that my father, my father was uh, back in the seventies. He, uh, he was a truck driver. He worked for a company called Delta out in the city of Commerce, and he was part of Teamsters. Yes. And uh, I remember my father working for Yellow, working for some of these uh, local freight uh, companies, and the dynamics. And my and I, he would always say, you know, if, if you ever want to become a truck driver, I said, no, that's not for me. <laughs> well, and the reason I have a commercial license, not that, that I wanted to be a truck driver, but there was an opportunity when I worked at the county that they were offering free training. So I took advantage of it and I maintained my commercial license to this day. Every two years, I do my DL-51, I do my medical and test with black cars. And you just never know. Yeah, never know. Maybe one day I'll be moving your furniture. <laughs> It's a true story. All right, let's continue. Okay, let's uh, congratulate our audience birthdays. Let's go give them a round of applause. So if you see anyone that you know on this list, please, please make sure to wish them a wonderful, happy birthday. I believe that, you know, whatever day it is, it's a home month. 
We celebrate the home runs. So congratulations to our August birthdays. All right, next slide. Next slide, please. There it is. All right, so we have our KW uh, anniversary, too. Look at the list of all these amazing agents. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for believing in KW, being part of KW, and more so being part of the South Bay office. So give all these people a round of applause as well for being part of Awesome. All right, Mason and uh, uh, yeah, Mason and Ryan have a big, 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 uh, big commercial sale, and uh, it's it's phenomenal. He did share with me some insights. Confidential, I can't really disclose the amount, but it's a huge opportunity that they list the uh, an awesome. Yeah, so. All right, let's continue. Next slide, please. All right, let's bring up Fernando Diaz. What is Fernando, what do you got for us? Good news on rates. Good news. Good news. I think that's Good, right. right. Step in the right direction. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, as you guys know, uh, rates have tumbled down uh, very aggressively over the last week, especially because of a lot of economic indicators, potential award and release, and a bunch of stuff. But you know, we can we can break it down later if you want. Um, so I will tell you that I would say for the most part, government loans that I've seen are in the fives um, and conventional loans. Some spaces are in the low high fives with the small cost, but I would say low sixes across the board. Uh, so we basically made, I would say, from a three or four week run going back, about a one to one and a quarter, one point three percent decrease in rates across the board, depending on the product. So that's a, a massive turn uh, in terms of where it's going. Um, we'll see. Obviously, there's there's talk and chatter about uh, potentially even a half point decrease in September. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, if that really does happen, if it's not a quarter, if it's a half, I think we'll see even more uh, improvement in the markets. So if a quarter happens, I think it'll stay pretty stagnant where it's at, as I've expected. Um, so that is where that is at. Um, my team over the last, let's say, four or five working days, we probably turned in about 15 or 20 refinances from a lot of the clients that were that bought and they were in the sevens that we have. Okay. Uh, obviously, we haven't been able to get to everybody we're trying to, or they're trying to get to as many as they can. Um, but I will tell you that what's happening, and I know, I know I've talked about it before, but this company that I'm with um, is one of the largest services in America. So that means that they hold on to their loans. Okay. That means that if they, they have like 120 billion in servicing currently. And if they can't, because of the while they do it, they'll, they'll subservice it out. They'll contract somebody else to hold on to it for them, sometimes temporarily, sometimes permanently. But what they do offer is that rate rebound, guys. So every single one of these refinances that we're doing right now, that we're in the sevens, they're virtually getting a free refinance because of the company. The company will not charge them processing, will not charge them underwriting, will pay for their appraisal, and give them a $1,000 towards the third party fees. So it's, I can't say it's free to the T, but it's almost free. Okay. So when we talk to clients and we're saying, hey, I know that rates are you know high and you guys are stretching yourselves, but here's what you have you know, for the future. You can use it in the first five years of home ownership at any time, but it's you know obviously we're going to be notifying you too. Uh, but take advantage because it's basically free on the house and uh, that'll help you get yourself into a better, more comfortable position in the future. Yeah. Somebody gets a loan at 7% or whatever. How long do they have to wait for the refi? They don't have to wait. They can wait 30 days, whatever. Okay. In most cases. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. the program, yeah, VA, HA, VA, they have to primary risk yeah. for the last two years. No, no, no. Oh. six months in some cases. I think it's a uh, six, six or seven months for VA or anybody to exactly. But in most cases, no, they can't be held there. And then that's part of the company's strategy. They don't want to lose that client out of their portfolio. Okay, because that's part of the business model. Actually, that's the biggest part of the business model. We'll call that. So they want to retain it. So they, they would rather. Do everything they can to not lose the client to go somewhere else. So yeah. that's part of the reason why they offer the rate review. Okay. So keep that in mind when you talk to clients that are yeah. a little bit, you know, like hey, you know, nervous. Well, yeah. I was, they have to be in there for a while before they can refill. Yep. And that's it. Unless you're, you know, we're not going to do prizes. We're not going to throw candy. I do have a question. Yes. With all these uh, new changes with the buyer representation agreement, and we're going to have a little broker update on open houses in a little bit. Yeah. Um, when it comes to concessions, right, especially your your FHA client health, right, that barely have enough uh, down payment and closing costs, and we submit an offer asking the seller for concessions, right, part of the uh, purchase agreement, 
there's a section there that allows the seller to pay, you know, either a flat fee or a percentage. Um, typically on an FHA, and maybe you do know, or maybe not, what's the maximum amount of concessions can a... Uh, for the most part. Six percent? Yeah. For that. Now for a conventional, under a 5% down or under, it's less. At 10% down, it goes higher. At 20% down, it goes even higher. At 20% down or more, I think it's 9%. Wow. It's kind of a conventional deal. Okay. Yeah. So I want you to think about that for one minute. If it says that it's 6%, right? 6%. And you uh, submit, and the, and the seller comes back and says, I can't do 6%, but I'm willing to do 3% for concessions, right? That's concessions to the buyer. Now, what can that concessions be used? The lender would be closing costs, right? All closing costs, but okay. you can't account. What happens <laughs> if it's uh, any overage? Uh, well, typically then at that point, we'll buy down your rate with whatever we have left. Okay. Can. Uh, or hold so, that thought. Okay. All right. So if the maximum amount of the closing costs can go into uh, the closing fees, right? And then maybe there's still some more money that we can use for a buy down, right? <laughs> buy down the rates of the number of payment is a little less, right? But what if there's even more? What, what if the seller says, yeah, I have no problem giving you 5%, right? Now you can utilize that uh, uh, extra overage, right? To maybe offset the cost that the buyer has an obligation to pay their, their, their buyer burger. Yeah. Yeah, the but keep in mind, the agencies, for the most part, that I know of, I've not heard anything differently, they're okay with the commission being built in, and their words are, as long as it's normal and customary. That's their definition of it. Normal and customary. customary. So whatever that means, I don't know, I'm not a realtor, uh, but the, those are, that's the verbiage they put out. Okay, And in most cases, they are not going to count it as a concession against that 3 or 6%, whatever you want to call it. That so far. Now, we'll see what happens. And, you know, like I said, this is all new starting, I guess, this week, next week, whatever it is. Uh, so we don't know. So it's sort of like, just like you guys are kind of learning as we go. We're kind of learning. I have not seen any major, like, changes from Fannie or Freddie or anything like that. So, you know, if you, if you email, it's different. But is that going to be consistent across the board with all lenders, or is each lender going to count? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the GSE. The GSEs are, you know, Fannie Freddie. FHA be a hypothetical that all of them, even though that's that's not what you mean, that's not what you're talking to. Um, but as long as that, yeah, is everybody selling to them or insuring to them. So as long as that's the case, it shouldn't be any different for anybody. You need to indicate how much goes toward the uh, recurring and non-recurring closing costs or how much goes toward paying the commission for the buyer's agent. Uh well, I'm sure you I mean you guys have the forms you want to separate that, I'm sure. Because I'll take well, one thing. Lender, I don't know how it works in terms of like your contract that hasn't really thoroughly right through and all that stuff. But if you put a buyer's concession of 5% and I'm a smart buyer, I'm taking the whole thing. You get not, but you can't. Right? But you have to figure out, okay, how do we break it down? Yeah, but that's break it down. Because right. so, so. they can say, no, it's a, it's a buy, it's a, it's a concession to, to me for my clothing. Yeah, and to buy down my rate. So now I get a further buy down on my rate. Yeah, it's and then you don't get anything. If right. it don't so utilize all of it, it goes back to the seller. So you need yes. to Yes. Or sometimes when we have, like, I've had $50,000 concessions, I'm like, what's stop every $50,000? So I go, let's use 25 for this and then bring down the price 25 you know, something like that. So, but in the contract, there is a form that you can ask the seller to pay you directly as an agent. We're not going to go through the listing agent. Right. So that's what I heard yesterday. I don't know. Right. Is there a form? Well, that's probably the uh, S. Uh, yeah, SPBB form. So that's the uh, the submission requesting compensation from the uh, seller. We're going to have more uh, conversations regarding uh, that. As a matter of fact, uh, this Friday, we're going to be going dissecting the RPA. So any other questions? Is there, uh, is there like now a new flip addendum or something? Yeah, there is. From July 1st. Really? Yeah. 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 Questions? Uh, I've also used overages on concessions for like repairs and updates on the home. Like I had a ten thousand. Be very so, careful on that when it yeah, comes to so finance. Careful. If it's not finance, it's fine. Or if it's private money financing, no problem. No problem. They, they, we used it for cleaning the home, right? Something we had a cleaning company uh, come do repairs. They invoiced escrow. That's what they did. It. So, yeah, you guys always be careful with a concession for a repair if the client's doing <laughs> traditional financing because the underwriters go ballistic. Right. I've seen, oh, $15,000 roof credit. Roof credit, what's wrong with the roof? That's the yeah, main thing. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing here? Ah.
figure that out. But there's ways to do it uh, on the up and up around, you know, the outside. You know, like for example, the seller on the seller's side can pay the roofing contractor directly, not affected by the money. Yeah, that way. Any other yeah. questions from their proceeds, yeah. right? From the proceeds of the, that they pay net pay here, so two thousand to X Y Z roofing contractor. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's give up for another round of applause. Oh, you didn't even say what's in those box. So, anyone open up their box yet? I'm curious to see what's in there. What's in there? This is a business card. It can't just be a business card. <laughs> okay. Okay. What else is in there? He actually gave me a, a tool. Uh, yeah, I haven't opened it yet. Too, so it's a little different. Yours is probably better. I don't know if it's Simon, is it a track? A track? You got your track? Uh, I don't know. I'll find out soon. That next slide. All right, just a friendly, friendly reminder. Mega Camp is uh, around the corner uh, next week. As a matter of fact, I am flying with leadership Sunday. Uh, we will still have a TV. I will just not be here running it. Uh, I'll be in Austin, Texas. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, fly back to California. So if you have not experienced Mega Agent Camp, it's awesome. Gary Keller, the leadership is up on stage. They go over the uh, company's uh, um, uh, mission. Thank you so much. And all of the stuff that is surrounding us. I know they're going to have a lot of talks of the NAR settlement as well. So if you are still interested, there's still time. You can register today, okay? That includes uh, your ticket to the four-day event. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mo Anderson does her uh, thing on Thursday. So again, if you're interested, we have a, a very good uh, participation going. So if you're interested, please, please uh, make sure to register. Next slide. Right. Family reunion is around the corner, February 17th through the 21st. It's going to be again in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, I think it's going to be three years consistently. Last year, this year, and then uh, 2026, I think it's going to be in Vegas, too. I like it. The reason, because I remember one year when we did family reunion, we were there for five days in Orlando. Boy, boy, trying to get up early. That's like getting up two in the morning here. Because it's about three hour difference. So I like it that it's big, it's just still within the same time zone. So if you're interested, early bird uh, special right now, it's 899. Uh, and that's next year. You still got several months uh, to uh, register for it. It's a great time. It's local. You can fly about $100 one way, $250. Uh, round trip to Las Vegas. Um, it's going to be probably in the same location uh, that we had it uh, last year, or this year, I should say. So, again, if you're interested, please uh, make sure to uh, scan that uh, QR code. All right. Next slide, please. All right. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, aware, but uh, KW Agent side, there's been an upgrade. Okay. So the website will be automatically up. Rated August 15th. Okay. It started last year and most uh, probably already upgraded to the new website. Save and review any custom pages. So it's a great platform with all the new changes with command. This is one of the enhancements as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. August 17th, it will automatically be up, uh, updated or upgraded, I should say. All right. Next slide. All right, uh, friendly reminder, last week we talked about the uh, real estate uh, millionaire agent. This is uh, part two. If you are interested in having a copy of the playbook, okay, I believe it's $25. Just uh, uh, scan that QR code and you can order. I know right now they're still in a backlog when it comes to the uh, part two of the millionaire's real estate playbook, but it's going to have some systems and models to really enhance the experience and how to navigate some of the top agents of what they're doing to uh, work with more buyers, more sellers, more investors. Okay, great book to have. I ordered, I got two coming in, 
So it's a great opportunity for you to just enhance the original uh, real estate mailing of uh, real estate book. Okay. All right, next slide. All right, anyone have any listing pitches? Buyer wants, need someone that's coming soon. Eric. I have a condo in Long Beach for $390, one bed, one bath. Uh, Right in downtown Long Beach, close to 555 State House on Linden and Broadway. Really want to get rid of that. Uh, I can believe it, sorry. <laughs> and I have a, a single family home in Mesquita, four bit for the bath, almost 2,000 square feet for uh, 990. Beautiful. And I have a condo, and I have a condo in Signal Hill for 580, oh. two bedrooms, two baths. This is Ileana. <laughs> Thank you for being on the uh, call. Yes, anyone else? Steve. <laughs> got, a, got one in North Florence. I'm activating on Friday. Three bedrooms, and three, bedrooms three bath, 20, just under 2,200 square feet. Real nice condition, uh, $1,249. Awesome. Hey, are you selling credit commission? Dollar <laughs> is willingly more than happily with a great big smile paying a two and a half in that commission. Yeah. Now remember, come uh, the 13th, the MLS is going to remove the BAC out of the MLS. Yeah. Right? So be, be ready for it. Anyone else? Go ahead. I have a buyer that's looking for a um, property in Oxnard in the Channel Islands. So if anybody has anything coming up. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Anyone else? Yes, please. Hi, I have a buyer that is looking for a two bedroom or one bedroom condo with a proof up to 900, 20% down payment conventional, anywhere in the South Bay area only. Only one South Bay. He's a type of Okay. Yeah, you should be able to find something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I do I don't know. 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 I do um trying to sell it so anybody please bring your buyers it's 1.595 fully renovated how many bedrooms three bedrooms two and a half bath plus an office is there an hoa no hoa it's a single family, single family. Uh -huh. SFR. what was the uh asking price again 1.595 1.595 yes Yes. On Goodman Avenue. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. Yes. I have a four bedroom, three bathroom house out of the area. Okay. And it's in Riverside. I'm hosting an open house this weekend, Sunday, from two to four. Yeah. If you have anyone interested, I'll be there. What's the asking price? Uh, 799. 799. Okay. It's 29. Does it have a pool? It's in a gated community, and they have a beautiful pool and playground for children. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Good, Good information. All right. That means uh, we're all working. Activity, activity, activity. So thank you very much. All right. Let's continue. Next slide, please. Uh, I believe it's a uh, broker update. So, Nat, if I can share my uh, computer. Do I have capability? Thank you much. All right. The form that I wanted to share with you is the uh, open house. All right, I, I've been getting a lot of questions with all of the changes. Do we do we need to now have a buyer representation agreement when they're uh, hosting an open house, right? The answer is no, you do not, right? They're just going to preview the home doesn't necessarily mean they're going to buy the home, right? So a lot of agents are under the misconception that they have to have a buyer representation agreement there on the spot. Now, I, I want to set the tone, I want to set the standard, and I want to be crystal clear, right, with all of the new changes happening as we speak, right? It's important to understand all of the different components and documentation. Yes, it is changing, okay? No question, right? 
The essence when hosting an open house is one of the questions is, I heard that you cannot host an open house if it's not with the same brokerage. Okay, have you heard that? Okay. Oh, we don't we don't allow uh, outside agents host open house. Okay. Here's the uh, the process to that. All right. Each independent brokerage runs their own process and procedures and policies. Okay. <clears throat> There's nothing that says that an agent cannot host someone else's listing one or even a competitor's uh, open house. As long as the listing agent and their brokerage allows it, we're golden, okay? We do the same thing. We have agents that host different, uh, different uh, uh, brokerages as well. It's not a problem. But if they say that it's a company policy that we have to abide by that, then you move on to the next one, right? The one that is allowed. So that's one of the components. Now, the question here is, well, Simon, and here it's more of a liability scenario, right? Because if you're the listing agent, right? And you allow someone else host your listing, right? Who holds liability <laughs> if something happens? Someone gets hurt, there's damage, or something gets missing, right? Sticky hands, right? Sticky hands. <laughs> are these very expensive glasses? <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to happen. Right? You just never know. This is why you need to have dialogue and conversation with your listing agent and ask, you know, what should I know about the home before hosting it, right? Be mentally prepared for it, right? Because there may be something that you don't know, right? Maybe it's a low beam in the garage that, you know, someone that's seven feet and you may have a seven foot person come in that they have to know and you can put a little notation, right? Or maybe the steps, right? And that's one of the most uh, uh, biggest issues that I see is narrow steps, right? Maybe putting a sign, you know, please go with caution because of the steps. So these are just things that you need to be aware of, but the only way you're gonna know is conversations with the listing agent, right? I, I'm a true believer that I think, uh, you know, when hosting an open house, do open houses that are vacant. Vacant, yes. you know, then hosting an open house when there's still personal items, right? Because we still may have to need the permission from the seller. Rosie. Yeah, just a little bit of training with the attorneys on uh, the car district. And one of the things that he says, you, he's afraid that people are going to come and say, okay, if I don't have to sign this, then I can say, okay, I did sign that form. They were telling me all this information and they were not like it all. Please, uh, Ned, if you can mute that person, please. Yes, I'm sorry. So if you call an open house and you don't have to sign anything. No, like it all. One second. Sorry. <laughs> the power of uh, technology, right? Dan, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you please uh, mute uh, whoever that's on? So, um, if, and you're going to get a lot of questions and different scenarios and how you navigate it. So, the core of the uh, question is? Yeah, somebody comes to the open house and you ask them to sign, they don't sign, and they have to ask the questions. You ask some questions about the property. Yeah. They could come back and say, well, you know, I didn't sign anything, and I was asking questions, and they should have not have uh, asked questions, so I'm going to sue them. Yeah. So, right. there was a liability issue at that time. So, I was yeah. trying to come Yeah. So, hold that thought, Shamika, please. So, here it is. I, I want to just uh, set the tone and the standard when it comes to this. It's a one pager, right? And it says open house visitor, but it also says non agency, right? It's a disclosure, but it's also a <laughs> signing. This form is similar to a registry, right? How many people host open houses? Okay, right. And part of the purpose around an open house is what? Yeah, right. To, to uh, gain an opportunity to service or work with a buyer, right? If you are the listing agent or if you're not, you're trying to get buyers, right? To either submit an offer on that particular property or have a working relationship on maybe possibly another property or maybe a seller that wants to sell, right? I mean, how many times have you posted an open house and you've got a listing out of it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, it is really clear of what it says. Property address, 
real estate uh, name and the brokerage is going to go on here, right? I would say get a stack of them, right? If you're one that likes to do consistent open houses, you want because on the bottom of this, it has a line for seven visitors. Now, <clears throat> the question is, what if it's a family of five? Mm -hmm. Do we have to get everyone that's over 18 years or older to sign one of these darn forms? The answer is no. No. If it's one person with a family and you're having engagement, this is the form that they only need to sign, not the other adults. It can be a significant other, family member, whatever the case, 18 years or older. Just that one person. Okay? It's now, pretty they, clear. If they come in with the agent's business card, um, yeah, so if they come with an agent business card, they have representation. Yeah. Then, you know, they probably already seen it on the MLS or the agent already uh, filtered that information to that consumer. So if they have representation, just let them in. So okay. they don't need to sign them. Uh, you don't need to have them sign up that because they, they already have a relationship. Okay. But, you know, even so, to keep track of everyone, right, is it still to your advantage to have that information? Something happens, you know, you want to know who was in this property, right? That's, again, just for peace of mind. Right. So I would still have them sign, but it's not required if they have representation. Okay? One, one, hold that down. Let me just okay. finish here. So visitor intention to be the property. What I don't like about this form is that it talks a lot about for the seller's best interest, for the seller's best interest, for the seller's best interest. Yeah. I get it, okay? What if you're not servicing or working with the seller, then it doesn't make any sense, but the language is here. There's no other form that says otherwise, so we have to use this form. So an agent is holding the open house uh, or conducting an, a live or a virtual tour of it, right? Agent does not have representation, uh, excuse me, agent does not represent the visitor. So it's, again, everything that's going on with the way of, of doing real estate moving forward coming August 13th, is we have to either know if that particular uh, consumer buyer has representation, wants representation, or just wants to look at the property, okay? Because we cannot force anyone to sign this form, yes? No. Right, we can. We can encourage them, and that is not a condition. If they say, look, Simon, I just want to see the house. I don't want to sign your darn form, okay? Well, the requirement is, and the condition is, you still have to allow them. It's an open house, okay? You can't say, well, if you don't sign it, I cannot let you in. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, unless, okay, unless you get straight directions from your seller stating in writing that they are requesting anyone showing or anyone coming in my home I want them to uh, sign that that's a that's a straight direction no uh, statement right then you can have that that uh, that conversation I completely <clears throat> understand under no obligations you need to sign this but unfortunately under the seller's direction I can only provide you with a flyer if you have any questions you can either reach out to an agent or if you want representation I can also represent you that's it that's it okay uh, communication with agent at open house. Any commission, any communication or sharing of information that an agent has with the visitor during the open house tour regarding the properties for the benefit, again, benefit of the seller and all acts of the agent and open house tour, even though that assists the visitors deciding whether to make an offer or not. Okay, so it's clear. Communication with the agent are not confidential, again, for the benefit of the seller, right? <clears throat> again, if you're the listing agent, then yes, of course, right? Because our number one goal is to what? Get an offer, get it in escrow, close it, and move on to the next property, right? If a visitor writes an offer on the property through an agent, at the time agent will disclose if the agent or the agent broker represents the seller exclusively or both the seller. So again, remember the listing agreement has that components that say an unrepresented buyer, okay? That doesn't mean dual agency, folks. It means someone that does not have representation. And you as a listing agent, you gotta also understand, if a buyer wants to submit an offer and the seller is willing to pay compensation, you can still have that separation where you don't have to represent the buyer, okay? 
Only if the buyer does want representation, then you'll sign the full exclusive buyer representation. Make sense? I know it's a lot, folks. Okay, but we're all in it together, right? Uh, visitors wants to be represented by the agent. Okay, so if that's the case, there's a new form called the PSRA form. Okay, and that it's kind of funky, kind of weird, but that form is only for the process and, and the opportunity if a buyer wants to submit an offer on that particular home or three other properties that are open house. Okay. Then you can have that one pager, which is the uh, the PSRA form. And it has language in there that it's just strictly on three properties that they only want representation on, and that's it. If they want full representation, then you have the option to go an exclusive or non-exclusive agreement. Okay. And here in the section, visitor's name. Agent, if any, email, and all that fun stuff. Okay. Any questions, thoughts? Hold that thought. You had a question. Uh, she mentioned something about possibly um, not being able to sign a form. I host a um, couple of open houses and not learned from a seasoned agent. It's a property visit and open house advisory form um, advising them about the risk, about possible recordings. Um, I have them sign both. Yeah, um, I just let them know, especially this form, in case they fall, have kids running around right. um, for the sake of the property. I let them know it's for um, their protection to make sure yeah. that they don't hurt themselves and, and for the protection of the homeowner. Yeah. And I haven't had any any kickbacks regarding the form. What I do have a problem is, is before these forms came out, I have my own personal open house form. After they get to that second form, I'm feeling a way because now I don't have a way to network with them to get information with them filling out my form. So that's the whole thing to feel like they're doing homework now once they get to my form. I'm finding that if I'm trying to get to the third form, they're not even touching it. So that's the problem that I have. Yeah. So let me touch a little bit on the form that you're talking about because there is a form. It's not a requirement form, but it's it's a form as an additional uh, supplement to caution the consumer that this home may have surveillance cameras. Right. A lot of homes now have cameras, and those cameras also have audio, right? Where now they can speak or they can listen. Mm -hmm. So it's just putting, uh, you know, transparency and uh, letting the consumer know, hey, anything you're saying about the property can be heard by the uh, by the owner. Yeah. If your intention is to submit an offer, right, and you're negotiating, be mindful that the seller may have an upper advantage yeah. if you're trying to negotiate, but they already know the cards right. because you've they already scaled so everything different. out because they heard it through the, uh, yes. the surveillance cameras, right? But that's, a, again, or, you know, it's a disclaimer and also a, a, a position of uh, concern and liability, right? If we're not, because maybe this home was created different than your cookie cutter homes, and maybe you don't see the set, but there's a set and someone may accidentally trip, right? So there's many variables that this form protects you as an agent from liability. Now, at the end of the day, if someone wants to sue, they're gonna sue regardless, right? But having the proper documentation, paperwork, uh, will definitely help us position you and in, in the company as well. So, okay, Chris. How long do we have to keep this form after the open house? Yeah, good you know, question. And then but, another question. Yeah. So the question is, how long do we keep this form, right? If you're the listing agent, as an example, right, part of the segue is if you get the listing canceled or it expires, right, there's language in a provision of the uh, listing agreement that says that if you provide the seller with an exclusion list of anyone that has entered the property, inquired into the property, broker involvement or submitted, excuse me, submitted an offer, then you want to provide that list of buyers that have potentially seen it. The reason behind that is in case this buyer comes back after it cancels or the uh, listing expires, they come back and buy, you may be still entitled to compensation. That's the whole purpose. So this is another segue. If they're hosting open houses, it gets canceled. You're the listing agent, but you have this. And then now you track it and find out that that particular buyer on a certain day bought this property 
then you might be able within that window clause of the listing agreement. And again, if you look at blank, there is nothing. But if you put 120 or whatever dates uh, after it expires, then you might have recourse for compensation. Yes. Say yes. Well, and that goes into the buyer representation agreement. So the buyer representation agreement has language similar to the listing agreement that says that after we have termination, you and I can terminate, right? You're the buyer, I'm the seller, I, uh, excuse me, the listing agent, or the agent. I decide to cancel, or you decide to cancel. I can also say, look, I provided a list of all of this homes that we were involved in, what we call broker involvement. If you go back and buy this within that clause, I might still be able to collect compensation from it. <clears throat> Should be graded. So, what if you're hosting an open house for a family uh, and you're collecting all the sign ins? Do you give the sign ins to the listing agent? No. The no. You're hosting, those are your, those are your leads. You host your leads. Okay. Not for, why would I host a, a open house and then provide you a listing agent? Here's all of the yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. It's well, if, again, if you have a good relationship with the listing agent, you're, you're benefiting the, the agent, not really you. Because the question here, why would you as a buyer hosting an open house that's not your listing, right? Uh, have them sign the registry is because you may have a relationship after you are, and, the, and the buyer may say, look, I, I, I want you to help me find and identify a home. Fantastic. Here's the process, right, in the buyer representation agreement. And then they go and do something else with another agent. You might still hold them accountable to compensation because you have these homes in place. Exactly. Okay. Your questions, guys. Last question. Sorry, sorry, my question. It's not uncommon for us to get 30, 40 groups into an open house at one time, especially on the first Saturday. So we have this thing, we get this mad rush. People, we're not going to get everybody to stop and sign in. And that's going to get a lot of getaways. We have to use common sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> practice. I get it. You know, we've had, yeah, remember during P or somebody from yeah. COVID time? Yeah. You know, we had a whole line on the side waiting. I remember. Yes. There was two uh, two agents that were going to duke it out because one <laughs> cut in front of the other. <laughs> waiting to get into the open house. Oh, no. I, you know, I don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's your discretion. Either, you know, stop everyone, have them sign before. You know, you, you take the lead, you take control of that. Awesome. Let's continue. Now, if you uh, if we have any uh, last minute uh, last minute slides, thank you for being uh, patient, and I know we're a little over our time. All right, just a friendly reminder: Saturday, September seventh, we have our KW potluck picnic. It'll be uh, at the Hickory Park in the city of Torrance. Please make sure to uh, sign up. You can talk to Natalie Potluck. So bring your favorite dish. Next slide. That is all. Thank you very much.